Welcome to The Witcher Lorecast, the show that explores the vast lore behind The Witcher games, show, and books. Witchers! Welcome back to The Witcher Lorecast. This is your host, Tom or Robots. I'm here with Toasty or Not Toasty of Not Here. Is that, is that your new name now? I didn't even, I just noticed on the chat screen that you've been it's been my name for a while i didn't even i never even look at this it's been my it's been my name since you didn't put me on the list for the charity stream oh yeah yeah that's right that's right and in the group where you guys did the D &D game yeah yeah i I purposely left you off and then i added you with the screen capture of your face looking really happy from one of our videos yeah. And you didn't appreciate that either. Uh, but anyway, yeah. hey, Toasty, we've got we got some buddies with us. This is the patron chat for the end of September 2022. Crazy how time goes by. We I'm just going to call everybody out and everyone just say hi at the same time. We've got Ben and Rob and Crow and Genesis. Hi, everybody. Hi. Hello. Hello. Back. Yeah. It's a party in here. Welcome. Welcome. So um, Rob is new. This is your first time, right, Rob? This is my first time on the internet. Hello. Welcome to the internet. Just, everything's so new. And it's all in here. It smells like a fresh new car. Um, so here's here's what we're doing today. Rob Rob has joined us on some of the patron chats from some of the other shows, like the Elder Scrolls Lorecast. But Rob had this idea. He was like, what if we go back and talk about making our own Witcher groups, schools? That's the word they use. Coven <laughs> popped in my head because of the word witch, and I was like, that's not right. Uh, witcher schools. So that's what we're discussing this week. We're creating our also, own witcher schools. Yeah. I did mention, like, if you don't want to create one, just like maybe change something about an existing one or something like that, just in case someone's like, well, I don't want to make up a whole school. But yeah, the school of the yeah. flamingo. No, not, not for me. Sorry. Um, okay. So I like this idea because it opens up a whole lot of potential. And we can go into like, what is the animal? Why is that the animal? That's the representation. What things do they teach at this school? What do they specialize in? Do they have abilities or differences from any of the other mainline schools? So Rob, do you want to kick us off? I know you've been just itching to talk about this. Yeah. I mean, so the, the thing that kicked it off was the episode when you guys were talking about the dwarves, uh, that was the episode just before the last patron episode. Mm -hmm. And I was in the chat kind of like, oh, what if we did this? And you guys were like, oh, yeah, that'd be kind of cool. It'd be dumb, but it'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, I, I really like that idea. So I just kept going off of it. Um, yeah. Didn't I throw I, out the idea of like a witcher school with dwarves, like being a dwarf witcher or something back I, then? Yeah, I think that's where the conversation started. And mm-hmm. I was like, well, what if there's a school like this? And that just because it was on the dwarves, I kind of stuck with the dwarf idea. So it's not that this would be like a dwarf witcher school necessarily, but it would be a witcher school located in the area of the dwarves so there will likely be a dwarf population in in the school or at least working with the school maybe because you know they get like i mean there's witcher schools getting help from the local mages or whatever all the time so i thought you were going to say that that the dwarf was going to be the mascot of the school so it'd be like school of the dwarf but there may or may not be dwarves in the school. That would be so racist. Like, <laughs> totally oh, we have the school would. Of the wolf, the bear, the cat, and you know those other beasts like the dwarf. <laughs> right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Super offensive. Um, yeah, obviously, I'm just joking. But so um, that's that's like the premise that got me going. But um, my idea is a school that focuses on brawling, brawling and sword play. Sword play is still always going to be very important. I'm not going to say, oh, throw away your sword. You don't need that because that's how you kill witchers. Um, well, that's how you kill. That's how witchers kill other monsters. Usually they don't hunt other witchers. Well, if you like convince a witcher to like throw away his sword, you're going to kill. Oh, I witcher. get you. I get you. you that's, if you that's, that's yeah. how you make I would a witcher never, die. Like, yes. say, oh, this is going to be a school that doesn't use swords. Like, no, that would be stupid. Right. We still need swords. Right. But um, you're like you're talking like brawling. You're like, like, is this like grappling? Is this like punching? Is this like Taekwondo? Is this full body stuff? Like, yes, yes, yes. And yes. So it's like the, um, this, the MMA witcher school. <laughs> But with a sword with oh holy god i want to watch this now can we <laughs> can we start a new mma thing but now they have swords too probably also like a silver dagger or like a punching dagger or something like that because that will you know you can get a little bit more close quarters and still have like a silver blade because silver is still very important for silver monster, wolverine claws 
Oh, that's even cooler. That's now in. You you got it. You're recruited. Um, <laughs> Can I be? <laughs> this is it the school of the Wolverine now. Is that what we just invented? So that was actually what my. I was actually going to go with school of the Wolverine was what? my original, but not for that reason. That's awesome though because I just made I just made that up on the spot. We did not talk about this ahead of time. I was thinking about either like school of the badger sure. or like well maybe something bigger than a badger. Let's do Wolverine because I like, badgers are very aggressive and um, very down to tussle. I guess is how I describe a badger <laughs> and a wolverine is the same thing, just bigger. Um, okay, so well, you, you learned it here first, everyone. A wolverine is just a big badger. I. I'm yeah, going to call Wolverine from the comics me. Big Badger from now on. Yeah, I mean, the the, the X-Man uh, mm -hmm. Wolverine and the actual animal Wolverine do not have a whole lot of overlap. There is a sum, I suppose, <laughs> but it's very weird that they called him the Wolverine. It we're, is. we're getting off topic here, I feel like. Yeah, I'm sorry. It's it's all my fault. Uh, um, I'm just excited <laughs> I'm about this. I'm, ex I'm so me, excited. Me too. I just don't want to take too much time. <laughs> oh, you're good. You're good. Okay, so they're they're into mixed martial arts plus swords. The school of the Wolverine is what you're thinking, or did you have another idea too? Well, so yes, I, I do have... It was either Badger, Wolverine, or I, I'll get to the other idea because I want to describe... Um, so relying on unarmed tactics is a backup plan. You want to master the unarmed fighting and brawling. That way, if you do lose your weapon, you're not screwed. You're still a very, very competent uh, fighter in that point. This and reminds me of the scene in season two of the show where Geralt takes down like the, the dudes that are coming after him and he doesn't even have a sword. Yes. And he's like punching them out and like taking their weapons and using them against them. Or like the second half of the Kikimura fight. Mm -hmm. in, in season one he, like he's brawling that thing for a lot of it and so it's like well what if there was a school that really honed in on making sure that you're really good at that kind of fighting um so i thought of the idea of like mixing alchemy with this because you know witchers all use you know uh sign magic and alchemy and all that yeah potions, so things, yeah. I, I feel like you would have to be a very high constitution type of person to be in the school of uh the witchers because the uh, things you're drinking are going to be a whole lot worse for you because they're going to make you repulsive to your enemies. Uh, that way, if a vampire is trying to bite in your neck, they're like, oh, what the? What is this? Why like, do you have you know, onion breath? Yeah. Or like poisonous blood or really, <laughs> oh, right. really dense skin or something like just drinking all sorts of potions to make yourself just the, the most unappetizing meal. Uh, Got it. And Got it. the anti-snack. Yeah, exactly. And so you, uh, I feel like you would have to be able to take a lot more disgusting type of potions more than the average witcher already can. Um, yeah, I, I can imagine that they would train them for that. Like, not only do they find the children that are able to go through the mutations, but then they also shoot yeah. for like taking extra mutations in order to build even more tolerance. Yeah, like if a kid's like, oh, I didn't have any side effects that were negative from these original potions that made me into a witcher. And then like the school was like, hey, we heard that you were pretty healthy and taking those potions pretty well. Why don't you come over to our school? And they like pick those kids up. We've got Wolverine claws. <laughs> Deal. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then that's so that's how I'd in, uh, intertwine the alchemy with the fighting style. And then the way I'd intertwine the magic, I was thinking of uh, you would definitely need the, the Quen uh sign a whole lot because you're just always in the danger zone so you're going to be needing quinn a lot uh but a fun one i thought was if you're doing a lot of grappling wrestling and uh you know like arm locks head locks if you use the ard sign you could like mimic a crocodile death roll like you you huh. get them pinched into a lock and then you use the art to like twist their body and snap their neck three times over because you twisted their body a bunch or something wow that's that intense so cool that's intense yeah yeah and so that's why i was like okay well maybe you could be like the school of the crocodile that could be uh, you know crocodile was my, my third idea badger wolverine crocodile nice. something like that this sounds really cool what do you guys think let's open this up toasty or anybody else who wants to chime in what do you guys think about this? When you said the Wolverine clause, I thought one hand made of steel and one hand made of silver. So that way you had both types <sighs> on you at all times. 
I have that in typed in. I had something to talk about. We'll talk about that later. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cool idea too. Or I guess I can talk about it now. Yeah, go for it. Um, yeah, share, share the rest uh, of your description here because we, we got to make sure we yeah, get through everybody. Yeah. Uh, because I wanted them to be in the dwarf area and dwarves are known for being very crafty, like good engineers. I, I thought this would be like, okay, if this is a school about brawling, it's probably pretty likely that you're going to find a, a witcher getting their arm chopped off or their leg chopped off. So prosthetics are going to be important. And dwarven prosthetic weaponry... Mm-hmm. intertwined into this to where just adding to the fighting style you get a silver bladed forearm attached to you as a prosthetic you get like a a steel hook of like a yeah or yeah, a mace a or hook. something yeah or maybe like a bear trap clamp on your <laughs> knee or something like that so you can knee them and lock them in or something something ridiculous just like whatever you can and it would just be so cool i can imagine the dwarves with like all these like wacky attachments yeah yeah it's like the cyberpunk school of the Witcher. <laughs> Funny <laughs> Cybernetic enough. attachments. <laughs> Funny enough, they just added prosthetics in the TTRPG. And there's some dwarven ones where you can actually use signs with those prosthetics. Huh. So Oh, in the Witcher Rob, T- TTRPG. Yeah, in the Witcher TTRPG, they just added that like a month ago. Yo, see, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Okay, well, cool. Anything uh, else, Rob? I think I think that was... Uh, just, so the enemies they would specialize are in the, the voracious and blood-drinking variety. You know, vampires, brooksas, all that good stuff. Anyone who wants to eat you or drink your blood. Because those are the ones that are probably going to be more able to brawl. But then I also also just like the idea of like, the, the witches in the school getting more and more cocky. And they'll just... You know, the, what they deem is too large to wrestle is going to vary from Witcher to Witcher. And there's going to be like that really psycho Witcher that's like, oh, no, I can I can like take a, a griffin. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so he's the one that wrestled a griffin once. No way. And survived. Yeah. <laughs> should have been there. So that's just a really fun idea. Um, I think that was it. Uh, yeah. That, I mean kind of set in different orders but that's that's pretty much my whole summary of the school that sounds awesome that sounds awesome i i want to see this i want to play as it in a game i want to i want to deck it out in cool gear um it's very very cool stuff anybody else have any other questions or things to add on to this one before we move to somebody else i was just gonna say because whenever you're talking about the wolverine claws and stuff like that since it's mostly like a hand-to-hand brawling kind of school maybe you could have like one of the um the assassin's creed sort of like retractable blade that they could wear on the top oh. of their arm or something so they you can go from just like, like boxing and then bring it out for the final kill yeah that's badass i love that yeah that would make sense i believe there's also a weapon called like a, a katar or something which is basically it. like a blade that goes on your fist it also worked too. So in Diablo two, the assassin uses guitars to fight, and now uh, that's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, this would be. And cool. Don't forget the silver knuckles. I mean, we saw Geralt use them in the show. Yeah, for sure, <clears throat> silver uh, made like brass type knuckles, uh, but you know, silver plated or something. That's totally a, a weapon that would be often used, or just like a punching dagger, which is a, so effectively like brass knuckles, except a blade comes out of the knuckle. That's a very common weapon and that would probably be very convenient to use Mm -hmm. i could see all of that this is awesome rob this is a really cool idea thanks for sharing this has been great um genesis i know you kind of have a limited connection do you want to go next just to make sure all things are working that is working out uh yeah i can do that let's see what i wrote up for tonight um okay so the school of the owl Uh, They took a secretive and stealthy path. Their mutagens are enhanced senses, mainly for eyesight and hearing. Their main focus is on ranged weapons, such as the longbow, shortbow, recurve, and crossbow. But at a pinch, can use blow darts and throwing knives. Catching an owl on the ground is difficult because it seems as though they can run on the slimmest of branches and tend to stay in the trees. While their animal copart can turn their heads a full 260 degrees because of their physiology, witchers of the owl have gone through extensive physical training and body modification 
to elongate the tendons and veins that prevent a non-witcher from keeping their heads on a swivel. Oh, that's nuts. Enhanced, yeah. <laughs> Enhanced eyesight includes a focus ability where looking at a target with intent causes the vision to narrow and focus, bringing to narrow and focus, bringing a better view and enhancing details, almost like zooming in on a scope. Uh huh. Man, so yeah. they're like they're like the sneaky sniper school. School. Yeah. But they've also got like more uh, general awareness too when they're kind of in that like looking around mode. It's like the polar opposite of the school. I was just it would be really creepy to see. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I wonder. I wonder, like we don't see like often when we see in the games or in the stories that the monster fight happens. Usually, it's pretty protracted. Like there's, it's kind of a big deal. Like it takes a bit to take a monster down, but a Witcher who was trained in one of these ways who had like this natural zoom in eyesight and like was very, very trained with ranged weapons could hang out in the trees and be undetected. Like, I wonder what kinds of monsters they could just like get just a hit from a distance, you know? Yeah. I think the pinpoint accuracy would have a huge benefit over trying to hit something multiple times with a sword or you just hit that one weak spot one time with a well-placed arrow it's gone yeah yeah or even you do some sort of summoning thing or you lure the monster out with a meal or whatever but then you hide instead of like like garrett will just sit and meditate and then he'll just be there when the monster comes in right and he's like all right let's do this and he takes his sword out and he fights the monster but instead you just hang out in the trees and you just wait for a good opportunity to snipe them right in the whatever part of their body kills them best depending on the monster it is in the butt it's always the butt it's That's always true. the butt. It's always. I think the butt. we talked about this in another episode, didn't you? You guys mm-hmm. mention the kill spots in the butt. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mention this when I play games on stream all the time. It does the most damage. Yeah. Anytime you <laughs> shoot something in a butt. I kind of like to imagine this. This school was started by, like, a splinter group of the Scoyatel. Yeah, it would make mm. sense. It sounds very elven. Yeah, and we know that like the bows and things are very yeah. Uh, for elven practice from a meta perspective this is also uh originated from what you get when you play a lot of the witcher and skyrim because you just got the stealth archer stealth archer <laughs> yep <laughs> this is my natural school <laughs> that's how that's i always default to stealth archer in skyrim when i stream it i have to does. i have to make a point to just be like okay i'm just gonna do more magic i'm gonna start fighting things with shields and stuff where did this bow come from? <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'll snipe that guy too. Yeah. No, this is a cool idea, Jen. Um, I like, I like this. Uh, yeah. The, and on top of it, like the, it does have something similar to Rob's in that you have to take these um, potions and things. And I mean, all the schools use potions, but this idea of using that as part of its benefit to the ranged part, as opposed to the up close physical confrontation mm-hmm. part. Mm-hmm. I'm curious, did you have any thoughts on, like, sign usage? No, because I don't use signs when I'm playing Witcher, so I don't even think about them. Yeah, <laughs> I feel enough. like signs would be very important in a school that doesn't really uh, prioritize a lot of combat. They just have, like, that one shot and that's it. So they probably would have, like, you know, signs to help with their stealth or... What's the one that slows them down? Uh, what's the name of that one? Uh, Yerden. Yerden. Yerdin yeah, could be really useful. Holes. And then no. right. Axie would be a good one, too, because you can use that to confuse your enemies real fast. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you set a trap with, like, the meal that draws out the, the monster, and then you put a Yerdin trap on it, so when they get in it, now they're moving even more slowly. That gives, plus you have the pinpoint accuracy of your weapon and your training. It's That's like a that's like a 200% bonus to, to damage, to crit damage right there. I'll take it. <laughs> just like also thinking like we saw with in, in the show of like how they implemented some of the signs like with Igni being a thing that you bestowed on the weapon mm. like fire arrows mm. yeah 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 I like the idea of schools having like because I think that is already has a, a concept in the uh, like the books at least or maybe the games i'm not sure uh but like the school the cats they have different potions and stuff that they take to make them more agile if i remember correctly that sounds right 
but I don't yeah remember and so specifically. like having different potions and alchemy stuff to mix in and then also just favoring a different style of sign usage or maybe none at all depending on the school i, I like that and that's a really awesome way to implement that into like this like super stealth sneaky master of the woods type of uh witcher that's really awesome yeah i like this i like this i also picture the uh the emblem being like an uh an owl like a full body like outline of an owl but the owl's like head is turned over uh, over its shoulder you know this idea of like the turning the head thing being part of the symbol mm -hmm. i love the yeah. long neck thing specifically <laughs> stretched out freaky. stuff That's freaky. yeah like one of those tribes in africa where they put the rings around their necks and they, their heads get elongated so that would actually make it more difficult you don't want to do that. The shorter the neck is how you can make it more flexible. Like I actually did research on owls and how they can turn their heads that far. Wow. It's because their jugular veins are in the back of their neck. So the reason we can't do it is that all of our muscles and tendons and veins stop us from doing that. But if also, there was some cool way enough. to move all of that backwards, then it would allow for a greater range of motion. So that's, that's what I was crazy. thinking that they would do is that somehow either through f physical manipulation or through witcher magic, sure. well, then they were able to move all that back. Mutagens, even, even the mutating the body in a way where things realign themselves throughout your neck. Yeah. That could be a thing. Very yeah. cool. Could you, could you get mutagens to give you gills? Sure. Is that, why not? Well, there's a potion that le lets you breathe underwater. So why well, not? Yeah. Temporarily, right? right, right. I think you make fish? it good enough in Witcher 3 that it's like permanent, but oh, this is video game physics are different. So, <laughs> <laughs> Well, cool stuff. Hey, tell you what, why don't we take a, a break, thank our sponsors, you guys too being that you're, you are some of our sponsors. Imagine that. And uh, we'll be back with Ben and Crow's schools. So don't go anywhere. Very well. Let us get this over with. Something has infested my vineyard. Mm -hmm. Great. Let me go prepare my something oil then. So this will be a quick one. We don't have any brand new patrons this week, but we do have 18 current patrons. So thank you to everybody who supports the show. And that includes our higher vampires who get shout out every week. Ben, good old ben, ben right here. Ben, thank you so much. And Jared M, thank you so much for your support. You guys are amazing. It's crazy. You guys are crazy supporting us as, at that level, but we appreciate it. So thank you so much. Um, no, it's a good thing. It's like crazy good. Like, it's so cool. Uh, but thank you to everybody who supports the show. We couldn't do this without you. And also, if you'd like to leave a rating or review on Apple Podcasts, we don't have any new of those yet there this week, but uh, that would be a wonderful way to support the show as well. A five-star rating with a bunch of words, and we'll read it out on a future episode of the show. Also, you can leave a rating on Spotify which is another way that you can support us and we'd really appreciate it. All right, let's move on with the rest of the show. Here we go. You smell of death and destiny, heroics and heartbreak. It's onion. Right, yeah. Yeah, he's already doing the onion thing, which helps fight against the vampires when you're in close proximity. That's why, that's why he knows, he knows. Um, all right, who wants to go next, Ben or Crow? Toss it up. Who who's ready to go? Crow. Uh, I mean, I can. I was gonna say Ben can go as long as he doesn't steal my idea. All right. Well, you go first, and then he can't steal your idea. All right. So, um, <clears throat> you know, big shocker, but mine's gonna be the school of the crow. Um, and I was thinking also like medallion design. It was either gonna be the head of a crow. Or the skull of a crow. Oh, like, yeah. Well, I kind of silvered out. Are you going more creepy or are you going more like cool? Or more both? cool, to be honest. So let me explain kind of what uh, I wanted to do with this. So obviously, whenever I read the topic, I was like, all right, school of the crow. Um, but I wanted to work the crow bit in there, plus, you know, a bit of my personality with obviously like Ariel combat <clears throat> yeah and crows do and fly so, fly so that yeah, makes sense too fly, yeah so. oh really tom um, i didn't that, know that that <laughs> connects <laughs> wait in what? case anyone wasn't Shit, sure <laughs> a crow <laughs> a crow is a flying bird oh wow unlike God, an I ostrich leave this I, 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 I gotta look this up 
mm-hmm. <laughs> but uh anyway so the way i was kind of thinking of it is we would specialize more in like griffins drag uh dragons you know stuff like that flying monsters <clears throat> but the way that we would train is even though i love the two-handed long sword probably slim down to a one-handed long sword or a one-handed short sword um light armor so more focused on dodging and getting out of the way and although we would teach all the signs we would really focus on art and maybe even give like some more uh, mutagens to make um make the witchers like lighter so then with ard i the way i was kind of picturing it is them being able to kind of propulse themselves into the air and then also control their air movement by using ard to push them around like a rocket jump um, yeah kind yeah of like um like if they shoot yeah, it at the of, ground then they would force them up because they're not so moving it's, the ground it's medieval iron man yeah kind of but like not without not with uh continuous flight i was thinking more of have you guys ever seen the uh the show ruby that rooster teeth made no but ben is nodding his head so ben, ben's nodding so there's a character in that game it's it's really cool should check it out uh it has a bunch of like unique weapons that the characters make themselves and there's this one uh one gal her name's yang i believe she has these uh these gauntlets that she wears that shoot out like shotgun shells and in the show just with the physics of the show she's able to like uh control her movements kind of in the air by if she's in the air shoot to one side it propels or mm-hmm. pushes her somewhere else or like opposite yeah we so get that's the idea of what i was right yeah Action, that's, that's what i was imagining sure yeah yeah and um let's see oh, i thought i had something else about oh and something that we would teach which you couldn't really tell i was thinking about this on the way home because i was jamming out and singing um but something that what were you what were you jamming probably, out to what were you what was your jam oh oh you'd get whiplash listening to my playlist it's all over the place i did listen to burn or jammed and sing along to burn butcher burn oh okay um, all right <laughs> and uh then there was put your head on my shoulder <laughs> so it just jumps all over the place um, nice really, Very i was hard. thinking about it Oh yeah. So, well, I was skipping all the heavy metal tonight. Only I, the heaviest. I just wasn't in the mood. The heaviest music. Um, but I, I was thinking about because how I kind of sing it is being in choir for a couple of years. I have pretty good control over like how to mimic a bit of like Joey Beatty's voice. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I can't remember the dude that. So sang, it's like doing voices, but, shoulder. but doing like it while singing. Mimicry. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like how a crow mimics, and so that's something I was thinking of as like just uh strategic tactic is putting forth the skill where witchers from the crow, or school of the crow actually were able to like either mimic monster sounds uh mimic bait or mimic people depending on what the situation is that's a cool idea the idea like that like call but cooler yeah yeah like they can hide in the bushes mimic something and then all of a sudden burst out through the air you know and like surprise <laughs> just blast off what do you guys think? Would like to join it? <laughs> <laughs> would throwing in like I don't know, like parasails and parachutes and like gliders and stuff like that would be that be in line or is that going too far? I don't know. Wing suits? So I yeah. like, I didn't necessarily think too much on that because I was trying to keep it pretty like grounded in the uh, the whole Witcher world as we know it, but that could be something uh, the kind of airbender type stuff. Yeah, I was going to think of like how airbenders glide. Yeah, like, because they have to worry like the wind and stuff. It's probably one thing to get up in the air, especially if they're already in a high place, like at the side of a cliff or a big tree, you know, like and then to push themselves even further up. The, the big question then is like, what happens on the way back down? Right. Like if you're jumping in the air and grappling with a with a griffin, and you're going to be fighting it and stabbing at it as, as it's flying around and hits the ground and you roll off. And like, that's one thing. But it's another thing. Like if you miss the Griffin, right? Like what, got, how do you I land? Got two things for that. Okay. Quinn. And then you also, whenever you're getting closer to the ground, use art again to slow yourself down. 
and then just roll out of it. Mm, okay, so it's cool. mostly signs. Like when you're in an yeah, elevator signs that's falling, you're supposed to jump up at the last second so you don't die. Right. Yeah. Like if you get in an elevator and the elevator breaks and falls, then you want to just watch the numbers of the rooms as you go down so you can jump right at the right at the bottom exactly and that saves your life mm -hmm. trust me i'm a doctor uh, i think of it like the 18 <laughs> whenever they're flying the tank and even though it's not the most scientific <laughs> sound they're flying the tank and they point the, the gun at the ground and start shooting so the recoil slows them down <laughs> oh man yes <laughs> amazing amazing well this is cool uh school of the crow man I, you guys all three of these have been very different I like the I like the creativity and the diversity here. Any other questions for Crow on this one? So for your sorry sorry okay. Rob, for your medallion, I was thinking Crow skull and then the wings on the side of the skull. I can see that. If you want to go cool, yeah. I think the skull is more like, fitting because so, I bet there's a high rate of death in this uh, this Witcher <laughs> school. <laughs> so, okay, actually, I'm trying to. I can't, there's somewhere over there, but my pilot wings, well, shit. So, oh, flash a little bit. saucy in here. There you go. So, the way that pilot wings it's, are is that they've got the wings and then they have like the symbol in the middle. So yeah. Something like that, but then with the uh, the crow skull in the middle. Yeah. 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 Totally. And crow, did you have something? This, uh, I'm sorry, Rob, did you have you have something? You oh, I was just saying, like, ironically, uh, Ben was talking about the, the medallion. I was like, I, I feel bad now because Genesis had a really cool idea for the medallion. Crow has a really cool idea for the medallion. I skipped over a medallion. I have no idea. Well, okay, so let's go back to yours real quick. Uh, Wolver are you going to go Wolverine? Are you going Crocodile? I, I feel like Wolverine is the one that fits the most. What do you guys think? Like, I think Wolverine's fun. Is, Everybody likes Wolverines like because of the... Badger, Wolverine, yeah. Wolverine Crocodile. Wolverine. I think Wolverine. Wolverine's the most fitting. Okay, so what, what do you do for Wolverine? I mean, they have like stripes on them, right? They Maybe take like, like coloration on like, their backs. The claw is the more important aspect of this, right? Because we're all about, you know... Like a Wolverine's punching. paw? Like a <laughs> yeah. Maybe have like in the background of it is like the rest of the Wolverine, but like in the forefront is the claw coming at you. Uh, I see. So it's like almost three dimensional. It's like the claws real big, and then like the the face and stuff yeah. is behind it. That's cool. And then on top of that, what is your school like? Um, like what are the witchers like personality wise? Do they have a, a like a type of uh dogma that they follow that's makes them stand out and that's a question that could be applied to all of these really so that, yeah that is a good question actually i remember the other thing i was gonna say as well um because i was even thinking of location for my school i was thinking like very top of like a mountain that you know how it's kind of hard to get to care more because you got to go through the trail and it's hard if you're not a witch or if you don't know the way i'm thinking like straight just cliff kind of where you got to be a bit of a billy goat to like maneuver up to it using hard um but yeah so kind of like the uh <laughs> i'm glad you like that not toasty um, just fucking super jumping up the mountain <laughs> yep. yep. like, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. guys we're heading home for the winter it's time to make the climb <laughs> yeah, nobody knocks on the door up there. <laughs> oh no! You either uh, you hear a knock or you hear a squish, and that's how you know who's home for Christmas. I feel like the same criticism that is thrown at Spider-Man would also be thrown against him. Whereas, like, throw him in an open field, and he doesn't have anything useful to do here. And it's like, right. well, you don't Art have any cliffs to, to jump to anything. off. You yeah, shoot off the ground. Well, that's why I would. We would train more to where again uh, it's kind of what i was saying before is we would train the other signs but we would really heavily focus on art and make it like more powerful than oh, right yeah. so it's right. just always like a blast so if your keep is on a cliff side and you have to use art to get to it how are you going to train new witches very carefully to get up we've got a bicycle <laughs> basket on a rope there you go. Yeah, yeah. You just wheel them up. <laughs> you, just, you put the little kids in the basket and wheel them up until they until they pass ben, the, the trial of the, the cliff. That's how they get. Yeah, that's how they get delivered to the keep. Uh -huh. The babies in a basket. Yep. They have yep. a crow that they uh, title the stork, and he just goes and picks up kids and flies them back. 
<laughs> that's a role. There's <laughs> that's one of the Witchers every year gets voted as it, it, voted it's in. It's not even like law of surprise or anything. It's just the crow randomly finds a kid. The story like unattended yeah. or something just swoops down, grabs it, and takes off. Yeah. All right. All right, Larry. Everyone <laughs> voted you the stork this year. Son of a. <laughs> Why do oh, I have to be the stork? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, this is another fun idea. Thanks for this, crow. All right, Ben, we're up to you. Oh, it's going to be very disappointing. <laughs> I am not creative whatsoever. So I was just going to. Um, basically go over copy more crow. no <laughs> it's not the same copy exactly. crow. <laughs> this is <laughs> everything crow said but that this is the school of the <laughs> raven <laughs> um it was just going to enhance like um if for me i would just enhance the school of the wolf personally boring um, no yeah, <laughs> the hey, school I'm of the dire wolf it, okay <laughs> um i'd go more into like experimentation with the signs itself themselves and alternate them further upon what you can actually do like in game uh like with igni instead of like shooting like an arc of fire or a stream do like like actual like fire blasts like fireballs oh kind of a thing Mm -hmm. or and then with combat i would train witchers not just in the two-handed long swords but also all other types of weapons short swords daggers for any type of use so if they like somehow lose their swords um or if they want to pick a different weapon that they want to use instead correct what's more comfortable with them personally than just a two-handed longsword makes sense yeah like me like i'm five three two-handed longswords is like literally almost like four (laughs) feet swords almost as tall as me it's kind of hard to use that's not quite true i've I've found two-handed longswords they're reason you can get like a zwy hander and that's probably taller than you are but like if you yeah, just those get like are a normal like... long sword eh, it might be you want like the one of the 48 uh, 44 inches instead of the 48 inches and then you're good that makes sense that makes sense yeah yeah but different but weapons are useful for different situations against different kinds of things um yeah some people want to use uh, like if you're fighting things with more armor than something that does impact like damage as opposed troll, to trying to cut something you could, if you're on a contract with a control or with like a troll or something you can go and pick up like a war hammer or something like that yeah. and something that you know is going to be more durable or or an axe or a spear spears yeah. don't get used enough yeah spears That's are true. very have traditionally That's been very, very effective weapons <laughs> You put something sharp at the end of a long stick and you can hit somebody before they reach you. Good I'm job. Stab that guy over there. <laughs> right. Not right here. Over there. Well, did you think about putting a knife on a stick? Huh? <laughs> huh? Interesting idea. Okay. So, sorry, yeah. Ben. No, yeah, you're <laughs> took good. This sideways. Uh, so, I mean, I just like do that and also possibly maybe hire um, alchemists and like possibly brew more enhanced potions or even new mutagens somehow with sorcerers um to be- get better enhanced eyesight to where you could actually instead of using the cat potion you could dilate your eyes whenever you need hmm. wow instead of using cat so this is like, like this is like the like all the witchers go to like regular classes this is like the advanced class mm-hmm. this is like witchers advanced school this is like advanced witcher advanced yeah. witcher right this is advanced darkness like <laughs> like congratulations you got all a's you get to go you get to go to the advanced class next year with the advanced witcher teacher who actually it's likes just... their job teaching as opposed to the regular teachers all <laughs> <laughs> school of the wolf 2 the sequel <laughs> nice nice all right anybody have any questions for ben nothing i mean it's pretty pretty straightforward basically you're just ramping every turning everything up to 11. do they pretty have a much. different location other than care Morn, or is this like within care Morn? um with something like this i would have it separated from care Morn, um possibly even deeper in the mountains uh to where it's exclusive to where no one can get to them it's like a secret school but then how do they get new witchers ben then you have to go through care Morn. So they pull from Care Morin and they then pull from train Kaer them Morin. in a different location. Yeah. Correct. Got it. Got it. Cool. All right. All right. So something with that could be like you could have it 
<clears throat> like you said, deeper into the mountains or maybe even possibly in that, uh, that forest that we saw in the, uh, Oh, the anime that Netflix did. Oh, anyway, Nightmare of the Wolf. The creepy Nightmare forest the where all the yeah, children were have murdered. It. In the middle of that <laughs> forest. Where they all exploded? <laughs> where they all got yeah, exploded the by a ridiculous yeah. monster? But uh, you could have your uh, the fortress kind of set up in that forest. And then after they graduate from Kaer Morin or whatever the ceremony is, uh, so whenever they're selected, force them to trek from Kaer Morin by themselves to the fortress as like kind of a starting uh, step right that's like a, like the graduation ceremony <laughs> like tra- yeah, slash training go, go go to this trail and hope you don't like get a wraith and you yeah, don't hope, explode hope you don't spontaneously <laughs> explode right, right right i don't know about that but hmm, hmm. things to think about you can hope that you spontaneously explode ben if that helps <laughs> It'd be I don't a know if way I to go. Wanna, true, but it's a short life. If you have trained all your life to be a witcher, then just spontaneous explode. It's not. Mm. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. <laughs> if I can crow school's doing the same thing. Fair point. <laughs> the high chances of dying by going splat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't, I didn't use my sign soon enough. Crap. <laughs> Did we want to visit the, like the dogma ideas? Cause I asked crow and I, I don't think we, we kind of glossed over the answer there. Like with the, the ad, advanced wolf get a, a different dogma or anything. School of the Fox. Because they're all small. Mm. School of the bigger wolf. I mean, so, I like Tom's idea of dire wolves cause they are, essentially bigger wolves than dire wolves but like yeah. w- would they have an, any different kind of like philosophy Dogma philosophy right. um, oh, like um code of ways mm-hmm. or is it basically probably, the same as the it's, it's probably it's pretty much the same honestly yeah yeah what about jen jen did, did we, we get one from you is there anything different about the owls philosophy <laughs> the only thing that i kept thinking of while talking about that was well Oh. oh no! Oh, we no. lost her. Oh. She's Man, gone. That's how you end it. Oh. She's coming back. <laughs> we'll see ever. you next week. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Bye, everybody. No, uh, Jen, uh, Jen's coming back. Okay, we'll, we'll give her a good, Jen, second. Yeah. Are you there? I'm here. Okay, so uh, you, you said you said area. the yeah. only thing that that made me think of was, and then you just disappeared, and we were like, what? <laughs> So go ahead, say it again. Perfect timing. Yeah. Perfect timing. Uh, silent but deadly. Silent but deadly, <laughs> like a fart. We're up in the- <laughs> no, like a ninja talk. Oh, okay. Got it. Got it. <sighs> Got it. All right. Yes. I've been a dad ninja. for too long. Cool. All right. Hey, I've got a question. I got a question for Toasty. Toasty, did you come up with one? Like a no. real quick idea that you want to share? Then you don't have any idea. No. Crow, Crow's raising his hand. Yeah, yeah. Real quick, just because we talked about their dog. Okay, I'm sorry. I thought I thought we did talk. talk no, about no, this, you're good. Go ahead. I was just because there's a specific thing that now I want the internet to know. Okay. Um, for <laughs> for one, uh, I think that like personality wise, like route wise, um, obviously they'd kind of be a, a little bit more cocky and confident say like a pilot but uh <laughs> okay something that i really really want to share is the fact that like as soon as you get up into the keep like our fortress there's a big archway right in front of the uh, like the big room and at the very top in elvish it says don't try it i have the high ground <laughs> got it <laughs> got nice. it perfect perfect nice. star wars reference got it nice. i i have not answered the the philosophy question myself yes. either so Go i guess it. uh I feel like they'd be a lot like the school of the bear, but not mm-hmm. as the same, but very similar. Um, they'd probably encourage very angry, aggressive behavior. Like if you have anger problems, bring them in. Like we love that. <laughs> and um, yeah, they, they would probably be willing to wanting to settle most disputes by just fighting each other until they feel like then the matter settled. And it'd be a very aggressive place to be uh, most of the time. Yeah, authority. But then by... they cuddle at night to balance it out. <laughs> they keep each other warm oh, yeah. by cuddling at night. <laughs> I like it. I like, I like it. All right. So I had I had an idea for one. I had an idea for one. Oh, this will be oh, real okay. quick. All right. This is the school of the chameleon, 
And what they do is they've learned to concoct potions based off of Doppler's blood, which allows them to change their appearance to blend in in crowds. And philosophically, they've they've had it with society. They've realized that man is the true monster. And that's how they that's why they use their uh, chameleon esque qualities is to assassinate the people in society that they deemed the most monster like of humans yo all right yeah that's school, dark school it's dark it's dark but it could totally be a thing heck i think that might be worse than school of the viper yeah oh yeah like this is like they, they i mean this is like they take it upon themselves to be like all right this who knows emperor of uh, whoever or you know this leader of this group or whatever is doing things that are absolutely atrocious and they're the real monster and so now we need to hunt them and they will they will get paid to do so (laughs) is it kind of like the illuminati type thing where they like they feel like they can shape the the destiny of the world they control who's in power when or like you said like they get paid to do so or so are they just i think kind of the uh, weapon and they're just following the orders. Yeah. I think there has to be some sort of justification between identifying that it's a monster and getting paid for it. So like, for example, if someone says, Hey Geralt, I'm going to pay you with this bag of coins in order to kill this, let's just say Doppler and Geralt find, finds the Doppler and realizes that the Doppler was just doing Doppler things, trying to survive and wasn't actually doing anything evil because these kinds of things happen all the time. And Geralt decides to pass on the money and let the, let the Doppler live because the Doppler was trying to survive and there was some other terrible situation that he was put in by somebody else. And that's the real, the real monster in the situation. Right? So in that kind of scenario, Geralt is making a decision to get paid or not get paid based on determining if this is genuinely a monster, that's a threat. So I think in the same kind of way, if you put out a contract on somebody and in researching that individual, somebody from the school of communion realizes that that yes this is this person is in fact evil and and deserves death then they would go through with it if not they would say okay well this contract is null i'm not taking this so they're not creating their own like line of work and like we're going to decide to kill this person no we'll wait for someone to hire us but we will choose who we say yes to right right and because they've realized that man is the worst monster and so if they're going to make the world a better place then they need to remove the terrible people from doing terrible things it's dark it's dark but it also is like it's it's like punisher dark right like this idea of like taking out the bad people in society when throwing them in jail isn't the right solution because oftentimes it doesn't poison yeah right so something i was thinking about that just financially for that uh that school is say you like say you do have a contract for somebody then you like so you have to put a down payment on it like 250 gold or something like that where the contract you're actually going to pay them like 1500 if they carry it out Mm -hmm. but to just bring them the information the consultation 250 gold whether like pay up so even if they deem that the person's like not worth assassinating and it's just a, a petty grudge or something they still get paid they still get paid for their time that totally makes sense yeah, yeah ironically yeah. it's a lot more risky for this business even though your targets are a lot less threatening like right. your right your and stake as a person is is at stake yeah and they don't have to be as trained in the ways of like surviving its big monsters and and using all the a powers and and combat abilities that they have because if they can put on if they can take a potion of chameleon and yeah. be somebody at random and just getting close to somebody then they, they really it's just about stealthiness and assassination infiltration infiltration you know, the, information the gathering men yeah. Arya stark stuff like that yep yep yeah, it's, it's more about that than it is about actual combat prowess although they can still you know they're still trained to fight but that's the backup plan when they get caught right it's not the they don't fight either way through the building. They pretend to be somebody they're not. They collect the information they need to verify that this is a vi- viable target for them. And then they put themselves in the right situation to off them. Ta da. So, would, would you allow Dopplers to join your school? Uh, I don't know. I think that's, that's a good question. Maybe. Maybe if they're deemed uh, cooperative enough and that they stick to the philosophy of actually verifying. You know, I feel like they target. would be the best at it. They would be. The question is, like, do they do they align themselves with 
like within society working with others well usually they're How loners interesting would it be if it was founded by a doppelganger yeah that would be really and nobody knows it and that's like one of the secrets of the of the school yeah yeah that's true that's true um Anyway, that's just the idea I had. Thrown. What's uh, like the medallion? What's um, the medallion look like? It looks like a chameleon. It's got like kind of a like a. I mean, you can't do colors and things on a, a medallion because it's just metal, right? But like, just imagine a. You guys know what a chameleon looks like. I'm, I'm imagining it from the top down. So you've got like the the arms and legs, and it's oh. kind of like in one of those like crawly motions where it's kind of twisting its body a little bit. I was thinking like a front twisting facing itself. view with like the bug eyes look like very different directions <laughs> like, uh, yeah yeah now i was thinking from the top down with the body kind of twisted <laughs> with the idea of like twisting yourself to fit the scenario or the role you're playing so anyway that's it that's that's mine guys thank you for joining us this has been super fun let's go back through everybody and feel free to share any projects you've got going on things you want to share with everyone else or ways that they can reach out to you ben you're the first on the screen in my view i know you got some podcasts and Ben no longer there can go. talk. There he goes. Yay. Yep, there you go. My mouse froze. Um, yeah. So I am one of the hosts for Holocron Histories, Star Wars Canon versus Legends, where we go in a deep dive of the Star Wars lore between Canon and Legends. And then I am also now hosting another show called the Wizarding World Lore Cast, where we go in a deep dive of the Harry Potter lore and all of its magical substance. There is, uh, did not realize there was a whole lot and there is a lot to <laughs> yeah. go into in that. Um, That's awesome. But a lot of fun. Awesome. Well, thanks for joining us again, Ben. Yeah. Go check out Ben's shows and uh, let's go to Rob. Rob, thanks for joining us for being here this Thank week. Thank you for having me. This was an awesome first episode. I'm uh, very happy with my time here. Um, shout outs. Uh, you can follow me at, on Twitter, Rob, the princess. Uh, I also am a, uh, a uh, guild officer for the uh, Elder Scrolls Online Lore Casters Guild that you know was Tom created. Mm -hmm. So come play Elder Scrolls Online with me, even though I know this is not really the right place to talk about that. It's yeah, people play crossover enough. games. Come on over. Yeah, people try different stuff. Sure, why not? Yeah, the, the guild's been doing Toasty. lots of stuff lately. They've Toasty. been working together. When are you coming back, Toasty? Us. I need to come back too. When that we I missed you. Know. Mm -hmm. I'm I got, so busy, and, dude. I got it loaded up on my Steam Deck, and then Rob was like, Tom, you're back in the game. And I'm like, yeah, dude, I'm getting it set up on my Steam. But it's so yeah. hard to chat using that because you don't have the keyboard. We're so, trying to get a trial oh. group, so we need at least 12 players. And you guys right <laughs> here, you guys are that trial team, I promise. Yeah, everyone I go, it, go, I'm not go very play high level. Elder Scrolls Online with them and, ask, and make sure to ask Rob how great Molag Paul is. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Chris, I mean, Chris says not he's not long description. <laughs> Chris says he's not a very high level. I'm sure people in the in the guild would help yeah, play through stuff and get Crow, you leveled we up. We have if you tons to. of like we have people like level 20, and we're still bringing them along, and they learn a lot more, and they're able to level up themselves a bit more because they learn more about the game. So, I think level five. Yeah. Uh, shoot me a message. I can invite you to the guild. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, also, I am a uh, on the dev team for the Sky Oblivion project. Again, I know this is Witcher, not Elder Scrolls, but I got to share my stuff. Uh, check out Sky Oblivion, where it's a project where we're trying to recreate Oblivion, Elder Scrolls 4, uh, in the game uh, Skyrim, Elder Scrolls 5, oh, so that it's it. more accessible. Yeah, I'm on the dev team. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's working on it. Toasty's uh, like floored. I've been, I've been following that for like three years or something. Dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was too, and I was like, man, these guys need to hurry up. And I figured, you know, <laughs> I should stop complaining to them that they need to hurry up and just help them hurry up. And so that's what I did. Makes so sense. um if you guys also feel like that that's the best way to help come join the team if you have no experience we'll teach you it's not too hard to teach you like how to nav mesh that's what i do yeah. um but yeah that's, that's my shout outs twitter guild sky oblivion thank you this was awesome <laughs> thanks rob that that is awesome uh crow crow thanks for, welcome back again thanks for being here and i know you've got your pilot stuff that's going well anything else you want to yeah, share uh yeah so First of all, glad to be back. Sorry I missed last month's. Um, <clears throat> and second thing, this next, this coming week on Wednesday, I actually have my commercial check ride to get the license that says I can be paid. But nice. <clears throat> congratulations. Uh, That's a lot of work. I'm thank sure. you. Uh, it's, it's a lot of waiting <laughs> at yeah. the moment. Um, but I'm also now in 
I'm no longer a flight student. I am actually teach or getting my certifications to where I can teach people how to fly. Um, Very cool. So that's that's cool. Uh, but in other news, uh, this last week I became an uncle. Nice, my congrats! My sister had her first child, and I'm super excited. I can't wait to be such a bad influence on them. <laughs> awesome, awesome. But, yeah. yeah. And other than that, you can just find me on the Discord as Crow of Bellin. I don't really have any other social media. Well, cool. We'll have fun. Have fun with that little baby. That's awesome, dude. All right, and Genesis, Genesis, you've got stuff going on too. Let's see if Genesis yeah. connections work. Oh, here you are. Connected. Oh, and she disappeared again. Oh, uh, yeah, it, 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 I got it. I'll read it. She sent me the actual thing. Um, so it's fine. Um, in her words, uh, I'm Genesis, one half of the Two Girls, One Ship podcast, where we analyze video game romances. And with Toasty, hey, that's me, uh, on the new upcoming episodes of the Cyberpunk Lorecast, we start live streaming and recording episodes on Thursday, the 29th on twitch.tv slash cyberpunk lorecast. And yeah, of course, there you, go. you can find me mainly on the Robots Radio Discord and Twitter. Yep. Yeah. With all the new cyberpunk stuff out, uh, we decided I decided because it was my show originally and I decided, you know what, we're going to bring it back. But I don't have the time to do it because I've taken on other projects in the meantime since that show has been kind of dormant. So Toasty and Genesis are now taking on the project together and we'll be continuing the cyberpunk forecast. So if you're into cyberpunk, go check it out. They're going to have some new episodes coming out very soon. So Genesis, I'm sorry, your, your connection dropped out, but uh, thank you very much for being here. I think yeah, there might I promise not to live stream from my phone. <laughs> no, yeah. it's, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, live stream from your phone would be would be tricky. Toasty, what do you got going on? Well, as it was just stated before, mm -hmm. um, Cyberpunk Lorecast, I'm doing that now. Um, of course, follow us at the Witcher Lorecast on Twitter. Um, and we got uh, still making episodes of Cyberpunk, Cyberpunk Apostrophe D uh, with the Fumbling Four and Almighty Critch gang over there. So Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, <clears> go throat> check throat> that out. Stuff. You can find all of the different shows that were mentioned at robotsradio.net. There's links to all of that stuff. You can find my other shows, all the different lore casts I do. Uh, Lord of the Rings lore cast, Elder Scrolls lore cast, Fallout lore cast, Mass Effect lore cast. Um, go check that stuff out if you're into any of those fandoms and you want more content uh thank you everybody again for being here this has been awesome chat thank you for being here as well come join us next next week we'll be back again monday night at 9 p.m eastern 6 p.m pacific that'll be it for this week until then stay safe on the path we'll see you guys later bye everybody Thanks for tuning in to The Witcher Lorecast. We'd love to hear about your experiences with the games and the books and the TV series and all your thoughts on everything. Please check out the Robots Radio Discord and follow us on Twitter at Witcher Lorecast. You've been listening to a Robots Radio podcast. Smart shows for interesting people. Check out all the shows at robotsradio.net.